Jacqueline. And as you can tell, today's story is going to be about an elephant. We're going to read a story and we also have an Aesop fable that we're going to read for you. This is a elephant that Jocelyn got from the Houston Zoo. So she's going to have that with us in the video today because we're going to be reading the Shaggy Baggy Elephant. So let us begin with the story because we're also going to be reading an Aesop fable about an elephant. The Shaggy Baggy Elephant, which was written in 1947. It is by K and B Jackson and illustrated by Tingren. A happy little elephant was dancing through the jungle. He thought he was dancing beautifully. One, two, three, kick. But whenever he went, one, two, three, his big feet pounded so that they shook the whole jungle. And whenever he went kick, he kicked over a tree or a bush. The little elephant danced along, leaving wreckage behind him. Until one day, he met a parrot. Why are you shaking the jungle all to pieces? Cried the parrot, who had never before seen an elephant. What kind of animal are you anyway? The little elephant said, I don't know what kind of animal I am. I live all alone in the jungle. I dance and I kick and I call myself Sookie. It's a good sounding name and it fits me, don't you think? Maybe, answered the parrot, but if it does, it's the only thing that does fit you. Your ears are too big for you and your nose is way too big for you and your skin is much, much too big for you. It's baggy and saggy. You should call yourself Saggy Baggy. Sookie sighed. His pants did look pretty wrinkled. I'd be glad to improve myself, he said, but I don't know how to go about it. What shall I do? I can't tell you. I never saw anything like you in all of my life replied the parrot. The little elephant tried to smooth out his skin. He rubbed it with his trunk. That did no good. He pulled up his pants leg but they fell right back into a dozen of wrinkles. It was very disappointing and the parrot's saucy laugh didn't help one bit. Just then, a tiger came walking along. He was a beautiful, sleek tiger. His skin fit him like a glove. Sookie rushed up to him and said, Tiger, please tell me why your skin fits you so well. The parrot says mine is all baggy and saggy. And I don't, and I do want to make it fit me like yours fits you. The tiger didn't care a fig about Sookie's troubles, but he did feel flattered and important. And he did feel just a little mite hungry. My skin always did fit, said the tiger. Maybe it's just because I take a lot of exercise. But, added the tiger, if you don't care for exercise, I shall be delighted to nibble a few of those extra pounds of skin off of you. Oh, no, thank you, no thank you, cried Sookie. I love exercise, just watch me. Sookie ran until he was well beyond reach. Then he did somersaults and rolled on his back. 
He walked on his hind legs and he walked on his front legs. When Suki wandered down to the ground into the river to get a big drink of water, he met the parrot. The parrot laughed harder than ever. I tried exercising, signed the little elephant. Now I don't know what to do. Soak in the water the way the crocodile does, laughed the parrot. Maybe your skin will shrink. So Suki trampled straight into the water. But before he had soaked nearly long enough to shrink his skin, a great big crocodile came swimming up, snapping his fierce jaws and looking greedily at Sookie's tender ears. Ah. The little elephant clambered up the bank and ran away feeling very discouraged. I'd better hide in a dark place where my bags and sags and creases and wrinkles won't show, he said. By and by, he found a deep, dark cave and with a heavy sigh, he trampled inside and he sat down. he heard a fierce growling and grumbling and snarling. He peeked out of the cave and saw a lion patting down the path. I'm hungry, roared the lion. I haven't had a thing to eat today. Not a thing except a thin bony antelope and a piney monkey and a buffalo, but such a tough one. And two turtles, but you can't count turtles. There's nothing much to eat between those saucers they wear for clothes. I'm hungry. I could eat an elephant. And he began to pad straight toward the dark cave where the little elephant was hidden. This is the end of me, sags, bags, wrinkles and all, thought Sookie. And he let out one last trumpling barrow. Just as he did, the jungle was filled with a terrible crashing and an awful stomping. A whole herd of great gray wrinkled elephants came charging up and the big hungry lion jumped up in the air, turned around and ran away as fast as he could go. Sookie peeked out of the cave and all the big elephants smiled at him. Sookie thought that they were the most beautiful creatures he had ever seen. I wish I looked just like you, he said. You do, grinned the big elephants. You're a perfectly dandy little elephant. And that made Sookie so happy that he began to dance. One, two, three, kick. Through the jungle with all those big, brave, friendly elephants behind him. The saucy parrot watched them dance, but this time he didn't laugh. Not even to himself. And that is the saggy baggy elephant. I hope y'all enjoyed that story. Jocelyn and I are gonna be reading an elephant Aesop fable from our beautiful collection of fables. And if I'm not mistaken, I looked up the meaning of the fable and I totally forgot to um, tell you guys. So at the end of this video, don't, when after I say goodbye, I'm going to add a little bitty video of the meaning of the fable. But let us begin with the meaning of the fable. The elephant and the assembly of animals. 
the wise elephant whose efforts were always directed towards the benefit of his society saw with much concern the many abuses among the beasts beasts which called loudly for reform he therefore assembled them and with all due respect and humility began a long sermon wherein he spoke plainly to them about their vices and bad habits he called their attention especially to their idle ways their greed their cruelty their envy their hatred their treachery and their deceit to many of his editors, this speech was excellent, and they listened with opened mouth attention, especially such as the innocent dove, the faithful dog, the obedient camel, and the harmless sheep, and the industrious ant. The busy bee also approved much of this lecture. Another part of the audience were extremely offended and could scarcely endure so long an oration. The tiger, for instance, and the wolf were exceedingly tired, and the serpent hissed with all his might, while a murmur of disprobation burst from the wasp, the drone, the hornet, and the fly. The grasshopper hopped distinctly away from the assembly. The sloth was indignant, and the isolate ape mimicked the orderer. The elephant, seeing the two months, concluded his discourse with these words. My advice is addressed equally to all, but remember that those who feel hurt by any remarks of mine acknowledge their guilt. The innocent are unmoved. And the moral that I'll tell you the, in, the meaning of at the end of this video is it is the bit dog that howls. I'm back. I don't have sunglasses like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Anyways, the moral of the story, if you remember, it is the bit dog that howls, which actually means when somebody is speaking and you're very hurt by it, that means that you're guilty. Um, basically what it says in the story. Um, usually it means if you're annoyed, like if you're maybe listening to a sermon or a preacher preaching at church or your mommy and daddy giving you rules and regulations and stuff like that, or uh, you're at school and your teacher is speaking and you're just tired, annoyed, and you just don't wanna listen, you just don't like it. It's mostly because you're hurt by the words that they're saying. You know, it, a lot of times it means that whatever they're saying is truth. So I want to leave you with this beautiful picture of the fable. And we will see you next week for another story time with Jocelyn. God bless.